What's going on everybody? My name is Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. Today we're going to be reviewing Rittenhouse Rye Bottled in Bond. Alright guys, so we're back for another Bottled in Bond review today. So again, what is Bottled in Bond? has to be made in the United States, has to be aged at least four years, has to be made by one distiller in one distilling season, and it has to be 100 proof. So bottled and bond made by Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill makes a variety of products, things like your Elijah Craig's, the Heaven Hill White Label six year. Um, actually, they make the bottled and bond product of that as well. Old Fitzgerald, uh, they make a Henry McKenna, which is actually about $35, and that's a bottled and bond product too. So several different products from Heaven Hill that they make. But today we're moving on to a rye whiskey. So Rittenhouse Rye is a straight rye whiskey, meaning it's 100% rye mash bill. Now a high rye bourbon means, means it still has to be 51% corn. That's not the case with these. This is a straight rye, meaning it's 100% rye. So we're probably gonna be picking up completely different notes from a bourbon. I had a request to review a rye whiskey, so I figured we'd start with a good solid Rittenhouse product. Now this is actually the younger version of the Pikesville rye, which is a higher proof, but it's pretty much like the son or the baby brother of the Pikesville rye. I haven't had Pikesville rye myself. Um, again, it's higher proof, so if you're into that sort of thing, rye whiskeys and higher proof, it's probably a great product for you. I've heard great things about it if you are a rye fan. I am also breaking out the Tribeca glass for the first time today. I have not used this yet, so this is my first review using this glass. I'm pretty excited to try it. Let's see if we pick up any differences between this and the normal Glencairn Glen we'd be using. All right, so let's move on to the color here. Now this is a very light amber color, I would say. It looks almost just like caramel in a glass. Not, not too dark, I'm not sure the age statement on this. Um, if I can find, there's no age statement, but if I can find out about how, how long the age is, I will put it in the video, probably right up here or right here. But this is a very light caramel color. Let's go on to the nose here. It, uh, it doesn't burn at all on the nose, but it definitely doesn't smell like a bourbon to me. And interesting I say there's no burn on this because, again, I'm using the Tribeca glass for the first time with that wider lip on that glass. I'm wondering if that's dissipating some of that alcohol and just leaving me with the, the smell instead. I get a, a lot of pepper on the nose on this. Smell some cinnamon notes in there as well. These are all common notes with rye whiskey, so it's very common to get a, a peppery burn cinnamon smell sometimes, sometimes clove. And I would kind of describe this as maybe a dried fruit smell actually on the nose too. Maybe like a, a dried raisin smell. Kind of interesting. Don't know if I picked that up with rye before, but. All right, let's go on to the taster, guys. Cheers. You get the burn on the taste a lot more. Again, this is bottled in bond, so it's 100 proof. The burn is on the tongue. I picked up some cinnamon on the taste as well. Again, it feels peppery. With rye whiskeys, because they're naturally more spicy whiskeys, it's tough to tell if it's higher proof or if it's just the rye burn you're getting. A lot of times with rye whiskey, I get a dry taste left in my, left in my mouth. After one sip, I don't have that yet. We'll see when we go back in for another one. On the second sip, I am getting some caramel notes. Still spicy, and I'm actually getting a nice warming sensation in the chest here. Again, probably that 100 proof and probably a little bit of the rye as well doing that. Overall, it's got decent flavor. I'm not mad about sipping it at all. I would, ne I would definitely never turn this away if I was offered this from someone. I'm not really picking up any fruit flavor, per se, on the taste. I got it more in the nose, as I was describing before. And you know what, now going into the third sip, it is drying out the back of my tongue a little bit. Spiciness is really mellowing down, actually. I think my tongue is getting used to the flavor. First sip can be a little harsh, especially if it is a high rye and a higher proof whiskey in general. Overall, it's a, it's a decent product. Um, 
I would say this is probably what I would use more with mixed drinks. Rye whiskey is a fantastic mixer for things like Old Fashions, Manhattans. It, it kind of balances really well with the, the mixes you would put in a mixed drink. Things like bitters in an Old Fashioned, rye whiskey goes great with bitters in my opinion. But this is really a great product to use in your mixed drinks if you want to. And if you are a rye fan, you're going to like this bottle. I think I got this whiskey for $30 to $35. So if you don't want to pull the trigger on something more expensive like a Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye, which I have back here, or maybe Pikesville Rye, which again is the parent product of this, go out and pick this up. It's, like I said, $30 to $35 probably. Good for the value if you're using it for mixed drinks. It's a, I'd say it's a higher end mixed drink whiskey. Not something I'd be really sipping straight myself that often, but again, I'm not a big rye fan. So if you are a rye fan, this is probably going to be right in your wheelhouse. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Stay insane. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and that subscribe button. Also follow me on Instagram, at BourbonSane, and Facebook, BourbonSane.